Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you all are doing good. So in this video, let us uh, uh, solve a problem known as rotten oranges. So before solving this problem, I would like to tell you that in the previous part of this series, I have solved the problem distance of nearest cell having one. So please see this video. I have explained two approaches. It is quite a long 30 minute video, but I want you to see that. Uh, please do see it because if you know how to approach this problem, then solving this one will become easy. It will actually become easy. It's almost the same thing. So please watch the previous video where I have solved this problem first. And uh, I think it will come in the I card now somewhere else here. You can click on that and watch that if you haven't. If you have, we can continue. So given a grid of dimension n into m, where each cell in the grid can have value 0, 1, or 2. <coughs> so 0 means empty cell. And 1 means cell which have uh, fresh oranges. And 2 means rotten orange. We have to determine the minimum time required to rot all the oranges. Minimum time required to rot all the oranges. And so if one cell is rotten, then it can rot the other neighboring cells. But the neighboring cells should have oranges. So what I mean to say is, uh, let me just minimize myself once. So consider uh, the cell like this, OK? This cell has rotten orange because the value is 2. Now consider a neighboring cell. Suppose the value is 0 here. Then if then this rotten cell cannot do anything to this because there is no orange only. There is no orange. However, if suppose there is a cell 2 and on top of it there is cell 1 and bottom of cell 1 is there, then both these cells become rotten. Because this cell is rotten, these two cells also become rotten. So let us take some examples and try to understand now what the question is saying, OK? So let us say, uh, let me first draw. So I am actually drawing with this pen tablet here. I don't know if you can see it. So this pen tablet I have purchased so that I can present in a better way. So please let me know if it is better now. And it will take some time for me to get used to it. So please bear with me if it is little untidy initially. Uh, OK. So suppose uh, uh, the matrix is like this. Suppose the matrix is like this, OK? Now I have to find out minimum time required for all the oranges to rot. So let us start. Or actually, let me just make the matrix complete. OK, so this is the matrix. Now let us start. See, we can observe this cell is rotten. OK, this cell is rotten because it has a value 2. Rotten orange. OK, what is the neighboring cell of this to the left, this one? This cell, there is nothing. There is no orange. So this cell cannot be used to rotten the other oranges. See, if one cell gets rotten, it will rotten the remaining uh, neighboring cells of that cell also. So if we consider this cell, this cell can't be rotten because there is nothing here. Similarly, this also can't be, this also can't be. But look at this cell. This cell can be rotten. And how much time it will take? It will take one unit of time to rotten this. So one unit of time to rot in this cell. Okay, 
Now this cell is rotten. So let me say this is rotten R. I'm representing it with R. Now this cell is rotten. Okay. Can it rotten this cell? No, because there is no orange. Can it rotten this cell? Yes. So this cell will become rotten. But now what is the time? You should tell, you should tell the cumulative time. See, this took one unit of time. And from here to here, one unit. So one plus one, this will take two units of time. I hope you are understanding that will take two units of time. Okay. Now, is there any cell which is not yet rotten and can be rotten? Can this cell be rotten? No, there is nothing. But what about this fellow here? This fellow alone over here, he can't be rotten ever. Why can't he be rotten ever? See, from here you can't go like this because you can only go left, right, up and down. The, that's what the problem says, right? Uh, you can go only left, right. I don't know if it tells over here. But yeah, you should go only left, right, up and down. So this is, sorry, this problem. Yeah, I was seeing the other problem. See, this problem, left, right, up and down only you can go. So you can't, you can't do this. Diagonally, you can't go. So for this cell to get rotten, can, can you guess from where can it get rotten from? From where can it get rotten? Either this cell or this cell. But both these cells have a value zero only, which means there is nothing here. So how will this cell ever get rotten? So in this example, in this example, the answer should be minus one because uh, there is one cell which will never get rotten. So there is one cell which will never rotten. Okay, one cell is there which will never rotten. And now what are we supposed to do? Uh, actually, now let us assume that uh, instead of one, instead of one over here, let us assume instead of one, the cell was having value zero. Instead of one, the cell was having value zero. Then what would be the answer? See, then this cell, how many cells are there which can get rotten? This cell, this cell, this cell. What is the time taken for this cell to get rotten? Zero. It is already rotten. For this cell, I have written one unit. For this cell, two unit. Now you tell me what is minimum time for all the cells to get rotten. Minimum time for all the cells to get rotten will be the maximum time taken by any cell. I hope you're able to understand. Minimum time taken for all the cells to rotten for this entire, all the cells, the entire matrix. It will be the maximum time taken by any cell. So we should traverse the entire matrix and then find out, we should traverse everywhere and find out the time taken by each and every cell to get rotten. But we should not check the cells with value zero because they will never get rotten. So we should only check for cells with values having two and one. Two also we don't need to check because if cell has value two, it will take zero time only. So it is already rotten. So that is what this problem is about. And over here, we should understand one thing that if a cell contains value zero, it should be ignored because it won't help us ever. It won't help us to rot the other neighboring cells of this cell if a cell has a value zero. So this should be ignored. Only cells which have value one and two are useful to us. Okay. So if the if this value was zero here in this example, if this value was zero, the answer would be two. But if it if it is one now, the answer is minus one because this cell can never be rotten if it is one over here. So that is all the, the, the understanding is. So if you have not yet looked at the previous part, nearest one to every cell, where I have explained this, I have explained this code. Okay, this code is the second approach that I told in the previous part. 
and the second approach only i will be using over here so the same thing that is why i request you to watch the previous part okay and if you had forgotten or you didn't see the initial part of this video i'll put the i card here actually i think this is a better place because some of you don't see the initial phase or uh, you just quit i don't know why but yeah so there is no big change from the previous code to this code the only thing is we should add these conditions we don't want to check a uh, cell which has a value zero because it is not useful to us that is all we have to add if you are doing breakfast search also you just include this statement if you are doing bfs approach just include this statement in the part where you are trying to find adjacent uh, or neighboring cell uh, this thing distance <coughs> just include this part so what i have done here if matrix of ij is equal to 2 answer of ij is 0 because the time taken for that particular cell will to rot is 0 because it is already rotten then i am checking for all the cells which have a value equal to 1 and of course ensure this that no neighboring cell is having value 0 same thing so this approach is what this approach says first from the top left corner you go down to the bottom right then again from bottom right go to top left so i am again repeating this approach i have shown in the previous video please do check that out i have explained clearly over there and after doing this the answer is not yet done we have to find out the minimum time for all the cells to rot but i have taken max time over here why why have i named the variable max time because i just have to find out the maximum time taken by any cell that will only represent minimum time for me that only will represent minimum time because this approach that i am using right this approach that i am using will minimize the maximum time it will minimize the maximum time the approach that we are using itself is helpful in minimizing maximum time so out of all the minimized maximum times i have to find out maximum time because that will be the answer as i have already explained in this example 2 is the answer not 1 or not 0 so if maximum time is equal to uh actually i should change value over here i think this should be uh zero i guess so i think i made a small mistake let me correct it so actually uh, i got a little confused why i have taken int max minus 1 so it is because uh, if there is any matrix cell having value 1 which can't be rotten then it will represent int max minus 1 because i have declared all the cells in the answer matrix with a value int max minus 1 so if uh, in see in this example that i was telling you if this cell which was initially 1 i mean if it is 1 only for example if this cell is 1 i think it has become very untidy so just let me remove certain things yes so this cell is one right but this cell will never rot it will never get rotten that is why it will represent int max minus 1 as i have declared initially all these values in the answer this is the answer uh, uh, i was talking about the answer matrix so in the answer matrix each value is int max minus 1 as i have already discussed in the previous video each value is int max minus 1 so this cell in this example can never be rotten so it will remain int max minus 1 that is what i was checking over here so i am finding out the maximum time right so whenever matrix of ij is equal to 1 i am trying to find out maximum time 
why i am not checking for matrix of ij is equal to 2 because obviously the answer will be zero for that because that is already a rotten cell so over here there is a possibility that my max time becomes infinity which means one one of the cells cannot be rotten ever that is why i am returning minus 1 if the answer is int max minus 1 otherwise i am returning max time and this max time let me repeat one last time i'm telling again it represents the maximum of all the minimums that is required in this problem so i hope you now understood i just got a little confused uh, but i corrected myself and i hope you are also correcting uh, your this thing assumption and if you like the video please hit the like button i hope you understood if you didn't just see the previous part you will definitely get this this is also a very easy problem i have given you the direction and showed you the code you can take a, code is the same only these changes have to be made and only this has to be added which you can anyway do okay so that's all for this video please uh, share it with all your friends it might help them subscribe to the channel it will really motivate me and uh, that's all take care stay safe keep learning keep growing stay tuned bye